gentlemen, welcome to Imperious Rex Club. First rule of Imperious Rex Club, you do not talk about Imperious Rex Club. Second rule, you have to wear this. Hey, what's up, comic book fans? I am Neil's Unbridled Confusion. And I am Dave's Smoldering Disappointment. <laughs> and together, we are Imperious Rex. <sighs> First rule of Imperious Rex Club, as it turns out, don't read Fight Club 2 and 3. <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. But not to get ahead of ourselves, well, because we, yeah. it's a big episode. It, exactly. I because put second on the coat for it. Yeah, exactly. And the second rule is, don't read Fight Club 2 and 3. <laughs> right. But we'll get to it. So, uh, a couple Neil nights ago, mm -hmm. uh, we watched some good movies. Some classics. Some yeah. formative flicks, yeah, as we have called it. Mm -hmm. So we popped in uh, one of my all-time favorites, The Prestige. Oof. Chills. Still amazing. Still great. The only thing we can follow this up with is my other all-time favorite, which is Fight Club. Oof. So we put it in. It's been a while since I've seen it, mm -hmm. but this just shaped my life growing up when this came out in 99, yeah. I think. I was in middle school. You wanted to fight, I folks? just wanted to fight everybody <laughs> in middle school. <laughs> Bought a Fight Club shirt, wore it to school. My teacher made me turn it inside out because she's like, that's not appropriate. It's soap. It is just it, was is soap. it that shirt? Isn't it that exact that, shirt? No. Oh, okay. I, that one's still inside out somewhere. <laughs> oh, I had to get another one. Okay. But I loved it. It hit me at the perfect age where I was like really coming into movies and movie making and understanding everything that goes into it. Just opened my eyes to a whole new world. Prior to that, Matrix was a big one that oh, yeah. came out yeah. uh, right around that same time. So it was just a one-two punch of like, oh, my God, this is what movies can be? Yeah. I want to do movies. And here we are, doing movies. <laughs> yeah, look at us, go. I remember no one that I showed it to enjoyed it. They're all like, this is stupid. There's hardly any fighting in this. I'm like, it's not about it's, that. Yeah, no. I mean, it's called Fight Club, but you look beyond the title. Exactly. And Brad Pitt is ripped in it. So sure I mean, is. So there's that. You've got Ed Norton in his prime. Everyone was in their prime in this, I feel like. It oh, was yeah. like the, the best pairing of all of these creative people at the perfect time. Where, like, Chuck Palahniuk was just riding on easy street after this. Because I think, and I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna spit it right out here. When I saw this, I loved Chuck Palahniuk. And for years, I would say Chuck Palahniuk is my favorite author. Choke, my favorite book. Mm -hmm. He wrote Choke. Everything he touched, I thought was amazing. And then as time went on, and I kind of looked back, I think he got a lot of props because of Fight Club the movie. Yeah. Where it it occurred to me that, like, he's not... No, I don't want to... <laughs> Everything he writes is very much the same. Mm -hmm. They are all exactly Fight Club, but just through a couple different lenses. And, like, there's no story structure in any of them. They're all just, like, the the narrative voice is identical. Everything about it is just the narrator telling you and paraphrasing things that happened. And they're just like a collection of different little stories that he throws together and hopes that Jim Ewells, the screenwriter of Fight Club, can turn it into something that resembles yeah. an actual narrative. Yeah. It took me a long time to come to that realization. And I'm not saying I don't like Chuck Palahniuk, but I feel like I'm more willing to be critical now at this point where the rose-colored glasses have been removed and uh, just kind of seeing it for that all singing, all dancing crap of the world that it really is. Yeah. And it, I don't think it, it didn't help like later in the movie, in the book's life cycle, that it kind of turned into like this uber masculine kind of weird yeah. take on things where it's just like, it kind of feels dirty watching it. It, you know? it definitely hit a phenomenon where the right people saw it and a lot of the wrong people <laughs> saw it, I think. And, yeah. you know, it's like a lot of things where people kind of, took it and used it for something that it really wasn't meant for. You <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. Because the whole thing is basically like uh, criticizing toxic masculinity. Yeah. And all those toxic males took it and were like, yeah, fucking fight club. Well, That's what it's all about. <laughs> blow up a city building or something. <laughs> or like a Starbucks. That. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever we're feeling. <laughs> yeah. But there are, I mean, there are so many really great, interesting points made throughout the book and the movie. Mm -hmm. The movie, I just think, presents it in a better, linear way. Yeah. 
uh, presents a very non-linear story in a better linear way <laughs> that you can follow it. It's yeah. just better for that medium. But we came off that movie refreshed. Like we just walked out of a testicular support group. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we are like, oh, my God. it's It holds up. It does. Love it. I think uh, any issues with the novel, I think the movie corrected. I think it made a better ending. The pairing of Fincher, Dust Brothers, everybody, top of their yeah. game, masterpiece. Absolutely. Still absolutely great. Mm -hmm. And we were riding that high, and I was like, I've been wanting to read Fight Club 2 and 3 for the show. <laughs> and uh, this seems like as good a time better, as any. No better time than now, baby. Yep. That was probably a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Coming off the high of the movie and just going into unbridled Chuck Palahniuk, just left to his own devices, uh, first time comic writer, and I think it kind of it shows. shows. <laughs> yeah. I think Cameron Stewart, who is on the art duties, tries his best to pull it together into something that is somewhat legible I and readable. <laughs> that is one topic that I kept thinking about, because I can't visualize how the process worked between Stewart and Palahniuk at all. I don't know like, either. I did Palinic give him a like a script and he was just like I don't know what to do for like 80% of these pages kind of a thing <laughs> yeah. and he's just like oh just make it up or whatever so as you mentioned we came right off the movie into the books mm -hmm. and that actually I thought can almost set us up for failure in a, in a certain aspect because yeah. the movie realizes it in a realistic world it grounds it in reality and it makes it really digestible yes once you get into these it is Looney Tunes it is I a kid flat you out not. cartoon it's so like <laughs> yes. you're almost thrown off by how wacky and bizarre this actually gets right yeah they're the the novel Fight Club and the movie are both very satirical but the movie presents it in a way that is still believable to an extent. There are certain aspects you're like, I don't know about that. But yeah. at least you can take it with a grain of salt. The book, any, all of his writing does not concern itself with being believable whatsoever. No, not at all. <laughs> there are things that the movie can do, like that show the dual personality better. Uh -huh. When it gets to the comic book, it's impossible to know how that works yes like, i was gonna bring that up too i'm glad you did because there are moments where like physically this can't be happening this way yeah you yeah know? and it's like it felt like chuck just didn't give a shit whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> and i that is a phrase i'll probably come back to many times <laughs> yes. over the course of this analysis absolutely where i feel like he maybe just got in over his head and was like fuck i don't know uh, Tyler's back. <laughs> you know, yeah. Just, oh, yeah. Or something along those lines. We're yep. just like, uh, now this happens. Yeah. It is a lot of now this happens. Yes. And I, it's from page to page. The main character, I get who the narrator, I guess we can call him, but he got goes by Sebastian, Sebastian. In Fight Club Two. Yeah, and then there's whatever he's doing, which kind of follows directly after the the book probably takes right. place. We'll try to set it up as much as we can to tell what the yeah. story is. Yeah, because it, as it begins, there is something of a story before the wheels just go off it. <laughs> But it's basically Marla and the narrator are living a uh, suburban life now mm -hmm. after the end of the first like one. like 10 years or something afterwards? Yep. They have a kid. They're not happy. No. Sebastian, the narrator, is on all these medications that is making him just a shadow of his, his former self. And Marla is sick of it, so she fucks with his medication yep. to make Tyler come back so she can get a really good fuck out of him. <laughs> so she just rail the shit out of him like she used to. Yeah. Yeah. And that is essentially what starts it off. Pretty much. And then over the course of the next couple issues, I think it's ten issues in the first, mm -hmm. first sequel, their house is burned down, their child is kidnapped, and they go on a hunt to try to find their kid whom Tyler has kidnapped. But... There's so many moments where Tyler and the narrator are in completely different places. And they have, there's times when like helicopters show up and pick him up and escort him away. All within like the time it took him to fall asleep and wake back up. Yep. Tyler is essentially just running like this terrorist organ, this global terrorist organization. Yeah. 
where it's like I want to say they even throw in ties to ISIS and all these horrible things where it's like yeah he is not concerned with making Tyler likable no. in this at all he not is at all just god awful he's terrible it's hard to know it, and you almost have to assume and it actually plays out a lot in the books is that like everybody you meet that's not Marla or the main character is pretty much the in the fight club like they've yeah. all got like yeah. the the chemical burn yep. like the therapist everybody everyone is everyone in the fight club, is in the fight club yep. essentially and it's all just chaos there are a couple other returning characters from the the previous versions mm -hmm. uh bob the corpse of bob is resurrected or summoned various points throughout this with no explanation nope. but he's essentially solomon grundy he is just solomon grundy just a hulking golem that with they... a big old hole in his head oh yeah <laughs> still got bitch tits and all oh yeah swinging and swanging <laughs> but literally there's like oh there's this box we can't carry his name is robert paulson <laughs> his name is... and then he comes out and then just lifts a box to put it in a truck or some shit and you're like <laughs> what the is going yes. on <laughs> and i feel like that was chuck blowing his wad prematurely because he they also summon him at the end mm -hmm. and they make it like a big deal like hey we should summon robert paulson like maybe if you didn't do it earlier that would have been like a bigger thing a bigger yeah. reveal but like which brings me to <laughs> another note i have everything in this feels like it was just notes on a first draft that yeah. he just turned in oh yeah it is a box of loose threads yes it's it's <laughs> it's hard to keep track of and i'm not even i'm not even gonna say i did keep track of a lot of it it's impo no. it's impossible you just let it wash over you yeah and i've read almost all of palinix books i haven't read one in a while but that is kind of how they go but I guess the fact that it's not like a visual medium, you're easier to forgive some of these loose threads and yeah. there's just more going on, I guess. And you're not already in a pre-established universe where you kind of have expectations. Yeah. And as you're reading this, you're just like, fuck, this isn't how I pictured this would go. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> and I... I know that's on me, but it's like, but I still would like something a little more concrete than Ye this. Yeah. This is just the most abstract collection of weird little stories which is what his writing is but like it it just doesn't amount to anything no the what the like the movie and the book do it like the narrator is talking to you explaining and describing things mm -hmm. this it's it's left up to your imagination there is no like there isn't a ton of narrator stuff going on there's right. not actually a ton of dialogue in these books at all there is not no because a lot of his writing it's just like tyler says this it's just the narrator paraphrasing what someone says mm -hmm. so when someone does talk in this it doesn't sound like something anyone would say it sounds like someone describing, describing what... what someone said <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like summarizing everything we're just like Everyone sounds the same. What the fuck is going on with this? None of this makes any sense. Yeah. Where's Tyler? Yeah. Who's Tyler? Yeah. Is that Palinuk? Yeah. I know that's Palinuk. Is that Palinuk too? Who knows? The other space monkey with the glasses? Yeah. I thought that was Palinuk through the whole thing. It might be I still. don't know if it is. <laughs> <laughs> but on top of that, Chuck Palinuk is in this book. He writes himself in about halfway through at the point where he doesn't know where the story's going to go anymore. Yeah. So he it just cuts to him and his writing club full of all kinds of other uh, famous comic authors, like Chelsea Kane is in there and a couple <laughs> yep. others, and they're just, like, helping him try to workshop the script. Mm -hmm. And by the end of it, he's just like, and it's, it's, it's all done, wrapped up, happy ending. Yep. They're like, Chuck, no. He's like, nope, it's good. And they're like, Chuck, no, it's not over. It can't end that way. He's like, nope, cut it, print it, we're done, the end. And then they blow his head off. So, <laughs> yes. I mean, it all works out in the end. <laughs> It is just pure chaos. I feel like that was the one note. If there was one note an editor or one person who looked through it had is like... This, Kill yourself. This, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say that, but he was going to say it doesn't end or whatever. Yeah. Can you like think of an ending? And then he just thought of this weird meta ending for yeah. it. It actually has like three endings. Yeah. It has like the ending of the book itself. It has, like, the ending of Chuck writing the book, and then it has, like, the ending of Tyler coming out of the book and actually interacting yeah. with him in real life. And Tyler blows his head off. Yep. Because Chuck writes that Marla is carrying Tyler's kid, 
and she's gonna have an abortion and Tyler's like did you write that yet because he wants a kid yeah and Chuck's like no not yet so he blows his head off so he's like I'm gonna be a daddy yeah. and that's yep. how it ends I'm like all right so on top of that ending and just talking about how I mentioned earlier where I think Chuck has kind of been coasting on the good faith from Fight Club the movie yes I feel like by the end of this, he is dead set on destroying all of that good faith. Yep. Because there's even a moment where it ends and then all of the fans of the movie come to his house and demand that he make it better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I found that. And he's just like, fuck you. Yeah, just, no, whoa. He's like, didn't you read the book? And they're like, there's a book? Yeah. And they're like, Ch Chuck, <laughs> I've read the book. This still sucks. <laughs> uh, I thought that was a pretty funny moment that people just showed up to his house to say all this shit sucked. <laughs> and yeah. he's like, no, it doesn't, you idiots. Which is also how the book choke ends. So it's again, it's like, oh, Chuck, Jesus. You're, you're not even being original. You're yeah. ripping your own shit off. <laughs> That's a lot of Fight Club too. There are some moments that I wanted to mention that I did like yeah, of it. Yeah. The artwork uh, from Cameron Stewart, who we're not even going to get into, but by all appearances seems like a pretty despicable person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But a very good artist. Yeah. And I think he does some great work in this. There is one issue in this where Tyler attempts to get the narrator to commit suicide during a mission, mm -hmm. which again... How's that supposed to work, Tyler? <laughs> Don't know. But anyway, their plan is they're going to go to all the space monkeys in Project Mayhem, go to uh, all these art galleries, and they're going to slice their wrists and squeeze tennis balls and shoot, shoot blood, blood all yeah. over these famous artworks. Yep. And reading that almost made me queasy. I was, was like, gross. that is so fucking gross. And for whatever reason, like, blood shooting out of arteries is something that as I got older just really unnerved <laughs> me. <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah. But that part I thought that is a great idea. It seems very Fight Club. Yeah. It, it was depicted very well mm -hmm. to the point where I'm like I almost feel sick reading this. Yeah. But then ultimately it didn't really go anywhere. It was just like like a lot of his stuff just a fun little vignette that he throws in there yeah. and then onto the regular story that you can tell he gives two shits about. <laughs> yeah. He's so much more interested in writing these weird little odd things that have no bearing on the story, but using the story to just somehow be able to tell those instances. Yeah. And it, fight the book and the movie is just like that too. Like Tyler's a projectionist. He puts porn in his movies. He pisses in soups. All yeah. this shit's like, that doesn't mean anything to the story. No. But it's a fun little thing to learn about. Yeah. So in that very sequence, there is a thing about the the artwork in that, in this specific sequence, but it's throughout the whole book, which is both good and terrible all at the same time. So there, in instances of the book, there are like things overlaid on top of the artwork. Oh, yeah. Whether it be flies, just gross vomits, yeah. things like that. It like breaks the fourth wall, <clears throat> yeah. essentially. It's where like, it's like stuff you're reading lying something. on the page. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like the cigarette burns and like the cock that shows up yeah. in Fight Club. Yeah. It's just like one more thing to separate you from the story. Exactly. And in that scene specifically, where they're all going to go bleed on all this artwork, they're they're all on this huge, they're taking blood thinners, yeah. all these drugs. Anticoagulants. Yeah, it's just, the and all these drugs are scattered all over the page. Yeah. And that was an instance where I thought it worked. I thought that was great, too. It's just like a big bender thing, and it's all messed up. But there are other times where it's just there, really for no reason. And yes. it's, there are ones where it covers up an entire word bubble. And you can see there's an entire paragraph <laughs> under what this thing is saying. And you can't read any of it. You're like, you're like Chuck, if what? you don't give a shit, why should I give a shit about this? Exactly. Like, do, you, do you even care what you're writing? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not. No. I get, like, it's a cool artistic flourish, but it's done so much throughout it yeah. that I'm like, does anything in this matter? No. No, it does <laughs> no, not. No, it does not. <laughs> There's one thing I would like to mention as one of my favorite things in Fight Club 2 specifically. It's only one panel. It was the narrator's head exploding oh, with yeah. all of the different Ikea furniture, all yes. the stuff that he's composed of inside just yep. exploding out of his head. Yeah. I thought that was great. And speaking of the artwork, the covers of this oh, are amazing too. Incredible. David Mack David did Mack. all of these. So good. And he um, does all, all the volume covers. Yes. They're so good. I feel like all of these artists just jumped on board. They're like, oh shit, I can draw Fight Club? I can draw the Fight Club comic? And then as the comic winded down, 
you could tell that everyone was just losing steam and didn't give a shit anymore oh, because yeah. obviously Chuck did not give a shit about this whatsoever. <laughs> yep. Because like at the beginning of both of these volumes, Cameron Stewart's art is probably better than it's ever looked. Very and by good. the end of it, it looks like he is just wrapping it up as quickly as possible yeah. to move on to the next it's thing. like, Jesus Christ, I don't even know what I'm drawing anymore. These are the most <laughs> random assortment of pages I've ever seen. I spent a year of my life doing this <laughs> and it amounts to nothing. I don't think, like, th these just were nothing. Like, you would think Fight Club comic following one of the, you know, most pop culture movies of our time, that should be a big deal. Yeah. But the fact that, like, no one, no one even talks about it to rip it apart, other than us, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even under the radar. It's like people started reading them and they were like, this is fucked. Yeah. Just, like, I don't even care. Yeah. And they just, like, never thought about it again. Conceptually... It's such a cool thing that could be awesome. And it just is. Yeah. Bad. I mean, you're like, okay, the, the writer of Fight Club is going to take this to the comic medium. Awesome for comics. Yeah. But by the end of it, you're like, maybe you shouldn't have. <laughs> no. And right off the bat, you're like, God, should there be a Fight Club too? Like, I mean, obvious answer, no, there yeah. shouldn't. Yeah. And we realize that by the end of this. <laughs> but this is also so far removed from the Fight Club that's in everyone's consciousness yeah. that it... It might as well not even be Fight Club. No, at, it's not just at all. a random act only. of violence <laughs> that yeah. just didn't bring anything with it. Of Maybe value. that's the ultra meta thing he's doing. Is that <laughs> this is a Project Mayhem of things that he's doing? I'm sure he would say. I'm it gonna is. get people <laughs> reading this comic book, which is just fucking bizarre and bonkers. Maybe that was the plan all along. <laughs> like he just. I'm gonna fuck up Fight Club. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Honestly, if he wants to just brush his hands of it you did a great job yeah Chuck. <laughs> i think he does i think by the end of it he's like fucking sick of everything associated with it and maybe yeah. this was his way of telling it off could be but it's also his like most recognizable property so maybe the only thing that he actually could have legs to do <laughs> something in another medium uh, fight club three takes a different route where right off the bat it threw a bunch of shit at the reader and I was intrigued because a lot of it felt like stuff that I recognized from other pieces of media mm -hmm. like in this there is a, like an underground cult going around that is basically amassing followers through having sex with people yeah and it is straight up it follows yeah it's like a curse that if people don't go and spread it they die yeah they like puke their guts out but it's all like amassing followers to eventually overthrow heaven. Is that where you took this thing? Couldn't tell ya. There is a, there was a whole, I guess yes. And it's hard to like kind of conceptualize what the fuck is actually happening. It's so vague, but yeah. essentially there's a painting, like a picture frame. Yeah. That is a gateway to heaven, essentially. Yeah. And people are being like, brought into it and made as slaves like workers like the corporate workers drones to eventually overthrow heaven i think and it also kind of made a parallel that was tyler kind of like a jesus figure yeah that, like he was god's son and he was going out into the world to spread the gospel yeah yeah, I guess... They... Maybe all of those, maybe none of those. <laughs> I don't... It, it, there's just not enough there for even you and I to know exactly <laughs> if we know what we're on the same page or Was not. Was this even in the book? <laughs> I don't know. There is another thing they throw in here about Tyler Durden in Fight Club 3 where he's not just the narrator's subconscious alter ego. Right. He's like a genetic descendant that's been plaguing his entire family. Right, he's like a disease that yeah. has been passed down through generations. Yeah, and he's been like leading like everything you've seen with like this the son mm -hmm. of the narrator. Like he's always talking on the phone, like who are you talking to? He's like, oh nobody. Or yeah. it's always, but it's always like it's just Tyler Durden in another lineage, essentially. It's, yes, I guess to the point where it would be okay if Tyler made the narrator kill himself because he's just already like bringing up in his uh descendant there yeah and this is something that's kind of explored in a short story in one of palinic's more recent short story collections i think it's called make something up mm. i think it's called where there is a story about tyler plaguing all these men through generations 
and it's like technically a prequel to Fight Club. I reread it b- before this because yeah. I remembered it had something to do with it. It, it gives you very little. <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of more abstract ideas. Hmm. But it is, yeah, that does seem to be a uh, a theme that he carries with it here of like these dads that are gone and out of their son's life and they're essentially like raised by Tyler. Yeah. And that was one of the concepts I was like okay with. Or mm-hmm. I guess it was one that actually had something tangible and like had its boots on the ground to follow. Yeah. You're like, man, a screenwriter could really make something out of it. <laughs> Chuck, yeah. you are great with ideas, yeah. but you I just follow them through to something. Yeah. Everything we're talking about is is scattered as the story itself, but mm-hmm. there's one part of Spy Club 3 that I thought was just grotesquely hilarious, and it was Marla is pregnant with Tyler's baby. It's very much Tyler's kid. It's not the narrator's, even though they're one and the same. doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. And she wants to have an abortion. She goes to the abortion clinic, and the doctor's get ready to do it and he puts something in and it spits back out and hits him in the head he grabs these two tools he's like well you realize of course this means war (laughs) were you saying it's a looney tunes cartoon it is absolutely a looney tunes cartoon ah yeah and then she's like fuck it i'm i'm done with you i'm gonna go home do it the old-fashioned way she gets a coat hanger and you're like jesus christ and then she's uh explaining this all to the narrator and she's like kids bulletproof Shows a coat hanger, and it's bent into the words, nice try. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Good <Yeah>. lord! <laughs> the fuck is this book? We find Marla's backstory. Her parents would dress up as furries and have yep. sex in the woods. Yeah. And uh, they ended up getting mauled by actual bears. <laughs> they, who they thought were furries. Yeah. They're like, oh, you've come to get me. And there's just a bear that eats the shit yeah. out of her mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think Tyler kills her dad. Yeah. And then there's almost this weird kind of creepy incestuous relationship that she has then with Tyler because he almost becomes like a a parent, like a father figure for her growing up. And it's just, it's so many like half formed ideas that it's just in one year and out the other because I, none of it sticks. It's all too bizarre. It is. We haven't brought up Marla a lot, but she is in this quite a bit. Yeah. Like, as, almost as much as the narrator, doing completely different random things. Like, yeah. she goes and, like, like she goes to, like, the Middle East with a bunch of, like, yeah. people with that, like, a ge- 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 genetic, genetic disease or yeah, something? Yeah, a genetic disorder that makes children uh, appear very old. I cannot remember what it's called. It's got but a long name. There's, yeah. in one of his other books, there's a character that has that. So this was not the first time that he's focused on this too but yeah she goes to a support group of all these little kids that look like old people and she like wraps them them up into her mission to go to the middle east and they're like going and killing dictators yeah that i think in that volume are somehow controlled by tyler with his world terror organization yeah Yeah. and they do it through the make a dream foundation (laughs) yeah where like all they pretend to be little kids saying they're about to die and they want to go, like, to Honduras yeah. and, like, get an AK-47. <laughs> and they just keep getting all this shit. Like, that, I think, was the moment in Fight Club 2 where I was like, this thing is off the fucking rails. <laughs> yeah. Where they're, like, they're calling Make-A-Wish to, like, yeah, can I get, like, some B-52 bombers here? I'm <laughs> yeah, going to need an like, Apache helicopter. Well, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> yeah. And then one of those uh, geriatric children mm-hmm. is revealed to be a character from the Fight Club movie and book, Chloe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who is a cancer survivor. And this is another moment where, as I was talking about, I think Chuck was just writing it as one thing. And then he's like, oh, you know what? I'm going to make it Chloe. So it's not a kid with a genetic disorder. Nope. It's just an old, uh, just a woman with cancer. And didn't it mention that, that Chloe was doing the same thing that Marla and the narrator were doing? Yeah, she was like going to all these yeah. different support groups too. And then by the end, when they need to like tally up all of their sexual conquests for their followers, yep. they tag in Chloe, oh, and yeah. Chloe just like fucks everyone in the world. Hell yeah. Turns out she's just a sex beast. Yep. She loves it. Just swinging titties and all. Oh, man. God damn. What is this? <laughs> by the end of it, Marla has the child. Somehow they're convinced to sign over the adoption papers to this new family marla and the narrator go into the painting and end up being slaves in heaven yeah and uh tyler is like all right kiddo gonna see in 13 years and he marches off 
and here's a, a spoiler for anyone that gives a shit about any of this, but the baby the, that Tyler is technically the father of is the main character of the damned books that Chuck Palahniuk writes. Madison Spencer, she's the narrator of those books. Take from that what you will. It, if As you've someone, only read Fight Club and that's the big reveal, you're like, okay. Yeah, that's how I was. I yep. was like, this <laughs> means literally nothing to me because right. I didn't read Damned. And I don't think it means anything if you've read Damned either because I read Damned and I was like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Unless there's going to be a third Damned book and a third Fight Club 3 or Fight Club fucking 4 or whatever oh, the fuck this God. stupid thing is going to be. Uh, no. None of it means anything. Nope. And even if it does, I guarantee you it will also mean nothing. Nope. Not a thing. Man, what a great movie. It's good. The movie's <laughs> so good. So, as we were saying from the top, rule number one about Fight Club is don't read Fight Club 2 and 3. <laughs> Second rule, don't read Fight Club 2 and 3. Yes. And, like, we, we very rarely on this show rip something to shreds no we want to like it we do and i i would want nothing more than to like the sequel to my favorite movie of all time yeah so you have to understand how fucking bad this is <laughs> for me to dog pile on it like this yeah. because i was going in like when i picked this up i was like this is gonna be great oh, and about no. halfway through i was like this might be one of the worst <laughs> things i've ever read <laughs> Oh, God. And I like Palinek. It's just, it's just nothing. We, and actually, no, it's too much. It's everything. It's everything. With no consequences no. or resolution or anything. Yeah. And I or just, coherency. It, yeah. And I think this is where I'm going to touch on the one thing we said up top is that you can tell that this might have been his first foray into comic books because, yeah. like, it's just, it just doesn't have no. what, it, it just doesn't have the the consistency or, or whatever it needs like he just assume i i don't want to assume what you know, like what chuck thought but right. like it's just like i don't think he's watching this you, no. can, assume. you can make assumptions ah, geez. Just, and chuck if you are i apologize yeah it just wasn't for me <laughs> it's not for a lot of people so. <laughs> i don't know maybe he was just like somebody maybe was like hey you gotta do this i i totally feel like he was pressured into yeah. this or like someone brought it up like hey you should do this and he's like yeah maybe i should do this and then like three issues in he was like i can't fucking do this yeah like i don't i don't even like this yeah i'm just gonna fuck with people yeah and i can't believe like that makes me think like if if it ended with fight club 2 of him in the book being like i don't know how to do this and mm -hmm. then getting killed for it is great. That would be kind of I don't funny, get yeah. why Fight Club 3, ha I can't understand how that got, like, yeah. taken up. But maybe yeah. they were all done at the same time. Right, like, it could have been, that could have been it. And you're like, I guess we just can't do a sequel to Fight Club. Perfect. Which is pretty much what it is. Yeah. And then they're like, you know what, we got one more in us. Yeah. Equally as bad. No. no. <laughs> Worse, even. <laughs> it is. But what do you think about Fight Club? Have you read Fight Club oh. 2 and 3? Do you like the movie? Let us know in the comments down below. Oh, golly! God. I'm ready to fight someone after reading this. Fight myself for <laughs> subjecting myself to it, oh, which would be very Fight Club. It would be. I'll watch it happen. So, thanks everyone for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed our reviews of Fight Club 2 and 3. I can guarantee you that listening to this was better than reading these books. <laughs> I concur. But, if you like this and you want to see more, you know, hit the subscribe button. Like and follow. Comment down below what you think. That's right. It is my birthday and I would really appreciate a it is subscription his birthday. and a follow it is. and a like. Yeah. We also have a Patreon page if you'd like to contribute there where you can get uh, a Your different... name in the lights. Your name in the lights, <laughs> yes. We also have access to our Discord there too where you can chat about comic books all day. Let us know what you thought about Fight Club 2 and 3 there. We also have merch on redbubble.com. You can check it out. Get our faces on pillows and such. Get your... No. <laughs> <laughs> But until next time, I've been Neil's Extreme Disappointment. And I have been Dave's Equally Extreme Disappointment. <laughs> and we've been Pierce Rex. We'll catch you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.